Hello and welcome to each one of you today on this feast day of Mary. Each time it's a feast day for Mary, it's a feast for each one of us, but especially today for all the occasions and also it's the uh, patronage saint of uh, France. So we will be singing together and we have with us today, as you see, <coughs> two uh, members of our congregation, external members, André and Napoleon, and they have a little story about Mary, so we will be listening to them also. It's a special for, for, for the feast day of our mother today. So let us sing to start with. Let me sing to you, Mother Mary, each day of my life I want to bless your name. Hail, Mother of Graces, blessed are you, Ave. Ave Maria, Ave Maria, Ave Maria. Let me follow you, Mother Mary. Each day of my life I want to praise your name. Hail, Mother so tender, blessed are you, Ave. Ave Maria, Ave Maria, Ave Maria. Let me be your child, Mother Mary. Each day of my life I want to pray to you. Hail, Mother so loving, blessed are you, Ave. Ave Maria, Ave Maria, Ave want to be your child, Blessed Mother. This is the desire of each one of us, to be closer and always closer to you, Mother. And it, it's interesting to see a little bit of the story of this feast. And it was a surprise for me when I read it, so I want to share a few things with you. It's from the 5th uh, century in the sanctuary of Gethsemane that the first time they celebrated the glorification of Mary. And then the century after, they started talking about the dorm dormition or the rest of our mother Mary. <clears throat> and uh, very rapidly between Orient and Occident, this uh, feast day became very, very popular. And it's in the um, 1950 that the Pope, Pius XII, he declared the dogma of uh, the Assumption of Mary. But just to think that the people in the 4th century were, they, since it's like the Holy Spirit was there, and telling them that Mary didn't resurrect like Jesus, but there must have been something special. They, they weren't talking about the assumption of Mary, but they knew that she couldn't die like we do, because death is something that comes from sin, and Jesus was the, the, the winner on all that. But for Mary, it, it had to be something special. And this assumption of Mary is not only a gift for her, but it's a gift for each one of you, of us. It's a gift for you also, because what belongs to the mother belongs to the child. I tried that a few times with my own mother. I went into her room and I said, Mom, if this is yours, it's also mine. She just looked at me and she said, it's mine to start with. <laughs> because I would have been in her things all the time. But the Assumption of Mary is for us life 
sweetness and hope. And this is what we sing in the Salve Regina each night before we go to bed. It's life because that Jesus goes up into heaven, he enters with his body, with his soul. This is normal because Jesus is divine. But Mary, who's immortal, she goes in to heaven with her body and her soul. So this means that mortal people can go. You can go and I can go. So we'll be all united one day. And it's also uh, a mystery of sweetness because this says to us, you know Mary was there at the foot of the cross and she was there receiving the blood of Jesus. She was there praying for each one of us. But she's also in heaven, praying for each one of us. And she's there in heaven, looking upon us. Huh? So it's, a, it's, a, it's sweet to our heart to imagine her with her body, with her soul, and that we're sitting beside her, talking with her. And it's also a, a mystery of hope, because as I was saying, one day we know that our turn will come. What belongs to the mother belongs to the child. And <clears throat> I know a little story before we hear the stories of our brothers, but uh, they say that if St. Peter says to someone who gets to heaven, you can go in, the door is closed. Don't be afraid, if you're a child of Mary, she'll open all the windows. <laughs> Never forget that. Never forget that. So it's, this is a mystery of hope for each one of us. So now, who is starting? Who's going first? Napoleon. Yes, okay. Mary, under the name of Mary Help of Christians, or Marie Auxiliatrice in French, or in Latin, Maria Auxiliatrice. Mary Help of Christians, is, uh, is the patron saint of the Salesian family. I was me a member of the Salesian family for at least six years. I was brought up with them. Uh, I went to school, uh, high school and college with them also. So, but when I came back, uh, when I came uh, as a lay person, then I went to, uh, I married Yolande, and I, we went to Buckland to live in Buckland. It's the name of the, of the Paris is Marie Auxiliatrice Ooh. de Buckland. Oh, yeah? So it's not, it's just unbelievable how that came about. Then, uh, after a few years, we met uh, the family, Marie, Famille Miriam. Miriam family, and then we also like to come to Capshaw. And in Capshaw, there are there's the little sisters, the Titsar uh, Miriam. They, uh, they teach us a lot about Mary and the different titles that Mary have, and we love that. And it's not, uh, yes, of course, uh, my parish also, one thing that happened uh, I, for, I forgot that uh, we had statue of Marie Auxiliatrice in Montreal, and our our uh, pastor went to Montreal and brought the statue back to Marie Auxiliatrice in uh, in Boston. So this is it. I'm coming back to the uh, the Miriam family, and we are very happy to come here every year for about now five or six years, and to learn more about Mary. But thank you, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> this is like uh, the story of our, our founder, Sir Jean. When I was talking the other day in the Tridium uh, Marial, that Sir Jean was for many years in her congregation, the servants of the Holy Heart of Mary. And she left her congregation after, I don't know, 30, 35 years, and she founded the family Miriam. And, uh, but what is fantastic is, like your story, Mary didn't leave her because she left her congregation. Mary followed her. 
And about <clears throat> five or six years ago, she has this image in her room, of uh, in her bedroom, of uh, this Mary, of the Sacred Heart of Mary. And one day she was very, very sick, near close to dying, and we didn't know what to do with her. And I just looked at the Mary and I said, Mary, tell me what to do. And I think she told me the right thing because we saved her that day. But what was impressing, what, uh, what touched my heart, is that that Mary that had followed her for 35 years was still following her. So it's like a mother never forgets her child. And it's the same for you. You, you, you came out of the Salesians and you got married, but Mary is still following you. That's yeah, fantastic. That's right, yes. Yeah, that's nice. And André. My story. Okay. My father passed away in 2010, in March 2010. And uh, my brother and I decided to have a funeral celebrated for him, for the repose of his soul, in Dorval at the presentation of our Blessed Virgin Parish. Uh, we had the celebration and afterwards the parish priest um, gave my brother and I two liturg liturgical candles about yay high and uh, told us, look, it's a symbol, a token of the presence of your father. And should you feel you need to pray for him, do so. It's, uh, it's something visible for you to remember your father. That was in March. And that following summer, in July, there was a heat wave. It was hot, let me tell you. I don't know if it was hotter than this June, but it was hot. And um, our candle was placed on the dining room buffet. And um, not far away was a small basket containing a little, the bread of life uh, cartons or cards, what we call les petits pains de la parole. And uh, so we went to bed and the following morning, my candle had softened up and had bent down and it was in the cards, in the Bread of Life cards. And I said, my gosh, what, what's happening? So, uh, but it had cooled down now, it was in the morning. And so we, I tried to raise the candle and two word of God was in the candle. One I could remove, but the other one remained embedded. And I couldn't remove it, and I read what was saying. I don't know what pastor, but passage of scripture it was, but it says, soon I will deliver you. And I then realized that my father needed prayer. So that was in the summer, maybe July of 2010. A year went by, and in the December of the following year, in 2011, I went to a, a retreat house in Three Rivers, Quebec, for the week. It was a week-long retreat, and um, I entered the house, and I remember I sat down for the, <coughs> the dinner that evening, and uh, someone mentioned that uh, reconciliation with our loved ones, with our deceased, is a real possibility. And that intrigued me, but it stayed there and maybe went out the other side. Anyways, I entered in the retreat, and... Um, it became apparent to me in keeping my log book that I had to pray for my father and my intention was I didn't want my dad to be in purgatory and because of me, perhaps of some misgrievance of my part or mistrust on my part. I, I wanted him to be free to go on toward, towards his destiny and that was to be received in the father's house. So that week went by and the, the, the last evening there was a celebration and um, there was praise and glory to our father and the one party responsible for the retreat house received a prophecy and it was addressed to a person who had lost his father recently and it was Mother Mary that was Welcome him, welcome him in, into heaven. And the, the person repeated the message because he's to make sure that I had understood, and I had felt it was immediately me that the message was addressed or the prophecy. 
And it just, it was interesting because that evening, it was the, the eve of the December 8th, the feast of our Immaculate Conception of Mary. And I said, my God, he takes care of us, doesn't he? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Thank you very much, both of you. And probably each one of us, each one of you also have has a story, a precious story, a relation with Mary. So here's a little challenge for you on this feast day. Why don't you share a story that you have with someone? And probably that someone will say, I also have a story with Mary. And you can say to that person the same thing. Why don't you share it with another person? And today, we'll all be talking about our mother Mary and all the blessing that she, uh, she permits that we receive, especially through Mary uh, Auxiliatrice of all graces. Yes. <laughs> so have a great day, have a great feast day, and we will be together again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Ave Maria. Maria.